What's up, Trios Tribe? We got a, uh, we uh, we just had another weekend of, of regional events. We had TAC Online Regional Oceania on the on Saturday the twenty third, and then we had Latin America t on the twenty fourth. Um, this video will only cover the TAC Regional because uh, just I'm gonna split them up. You guys know me at this point. I try to cover every deck. I try to give everybody at least a minute or two in, t in terms of talking. You guys. You know worked your hardest to get to top 16 and some and like you know part of that top 16 fun is kind of getting your video your deck talked about in those videos and it always feels kind of bad when like you know you just because you weren't the best in this case for sovereigns player um you don't you just don't get talked about you get skipped over and that always feels bad especially since like that's part of what you're looking forward to when you get top when you top an event like this so i try to give everybody at least a minute or two uh, so respect that. Uh, I respect that. So anyway, eggmanevents.com, where this is where we post everything. Everything, all the links will be here. Link in the description below. Eggman allows us by hosting the site. Eggman allows us to, you know, just keep track of uh, a history, a catalog of all the tournament events and stuff. And that's really cool and really dope. And so when you're here, uh, turn off ad block. Help the guy out. Like this isn't the sites aren't for free, you know. So the best we can do is, you know, turn off ad blocker and give give. You know at least make it a, a net neutral for the guy you know what i mean uh yeah and and then tack if you're in the oceana when you're if you're in the in oceana world uh make sure you give you're signing up to tack events make sure you're participating in those events and showing up to those events and proving to bandai and tack that we need higher player caps uh that being said top 16 uh 126 players showed up to this event march 23rd seven rounds in total um four sovereigns took it uh yeah cool i mean i know there's a lot of four sovereigns and beyblade believers four saint beast believers um yeah i'm shocked too i'm shocked too um I, I, I would not have put Four Sovereigns as a deck good enough to win a whole event, but I mean, here we are. And I guess like in a world, like if you're looking at the field, a world with a uh, uh, red hybrid, I mean, aces, aces kind of like, kind of are a pain in the butt for red hybrid. Like they don't have that kind of level five removal, Leviathan, you know, just being able to just nuke a board if you're fast enough and make them, put them in awkward situations too, especially with how aces are handled, it's kind of, kind of works for them especially since Leviathan is just procking your on deletions for you and then yeah like you see the rest of the field let's go over the rest of the field as you can see we had three three sovereigns so either people are realizing either this is just like a oceana thing they're really on this deck and they're really liking it or it's just you were seeing the metal evolve towards like you know this is what did well in north america and in europe and this is our answer to it and it's working really well um, we saw, we're seeing three red hybrids, three, uh, Leviathan X's, one Mega Gargomon, which is the bunniest deck. Uh, interesting to see a top. I, I, I've kind of, um, I kind of am on record saying like the deck's not that great yet. Just lacking a real boss monster and like ace is cool. Like the ace works and it slows, it allows you to play at the pace of your, like slow down the pace of your opponent's play really well even just the threat of it is enough to like pause your opponent to play inefficiently but it just doesn't feel like the rapid mon rush level four angle of it right now is good enough to actually take too many games but yeah one of one of in the top 16 kind of proves me wrong a little bit one of alpha mon which i know is a fan favorite and it's seeing seeing alpha mon at all is kind of cool right then we're on one Machine Dramon, plenty of Machine Dramon enjoyers. Nice to see one top every now and then. It's always, a, it's always to me, a deck that's good enough to top. Um, just doesn't always, so kind of in like that tier three status to me always. Just, it can always, I'm never like, I'm pleased to see it top, but I'm not expecting it to top. Like, it's like in that vague area of like, I like, yeah, I'm not shocked it topped, but I'm also not shocked it didn't. Uh, and then armor, armor coming up. Armor got the new uh, Magnemon from the starter deck, the blue black one with a security effect, the Digivolve, and then Digivolve uh, Vmon comes up all the time. It's actually nuts. One Numamon, which is a kind of a fall from grace from what we've seen in uh, other uh, other regions where we're seeing Numamon even win or being like a majority on par with Leviamon X. One Shine Greymon, another fan favorite. Shine Greymon just has the power along with its co cohort uh 
Mirage Galgamon burst mode. Uh, both decks just have OTK potential or have like this really good combo potential, and they just have that that level of I can win a game that gets you good, that makes you good enough to w top an event. So yeah, let's go into the the let's go into the list one by one. You guys know how I like to do these. Um, I go from the bottom, and I'll start with Mirage Gal. And then uh, instead of instead of going to Leviathan, I will wait until I will do all three once I'm towards the sixth place of the list. So I'll go Shine, I'll go Mirage, Shine, Nume, Armor. We'll skip Red Hybrid because Red Hybrid's up here. Machine, and then so we'll skip Sovereign because Sovereign's up here. And then we'll go. Oh, it's Leviathan time. And then I'll start from the bottom up. So like we skip around a little bit, but that allows me to you know talk about the difference really closely together it helps me make the video easier uh don't forget to uh if you use this information for your own videos or anything please please uh advertise us please please you know we we put work into putting this together for you guys so at least like credit where credits do credit us i'm not asking for anything crazy just credit us please especially if you use the pictures you know please anyway sorry mirage gal uh, Mirage Gao, uh, always a good deck. We're seeing three of the Gomamon, which is funny because this Gomamon, like, I feel like, like, so on the, on the start of main phase effect is really good, right? Turns the Digimon unblockable, remove a source that could be potentially, like, stopping you from, uh, winning or removing a body. Like, you can just snipe the correct source off a Black or Gray stack or a Greymon stack, or if there's a particular source that's giving you trouble, like a blocker and Herible, you can just get rid of it. Or maybe sometimes there's even an Ace. Um, not, it's not super common for an ace to be under, but like, kind of good. If, if you get there, it's kind of good. Um, but the inheritable kind of gives you a bad, the inheritable gives you a bad matchup against Leviathan and it's hilarious to me. It's so funny because the deck tr just traditionally does not run, um, on play Digimon effects. But then Gomamon gives you that, and then there's just worlds where <laughs> you just you just lose to yourself at that point, and it's kind of funny. Uh, three of the Betamon, just the on-play effect doesn't matter in this deck, but jamming. Jam we're just trying to find ways to swing in with our level fives, our, our level fours, our level fives safely without the fear of, I mean, we're going to always fear removal, but is what it is. Um, but not dying to uh, Digimon security battles, dope. Uh, playing uh, one Siakamon, it would be very. It's gonna be. It would be very interesting for me to see. Uh, very interesting to see because uh, obviously this counters trainings and counters a lot of green shenanigans. Uh, HPD far included, Digiabsorption not far from included. Um, like it would be interesting to see how many games they were able to win or how many four turns they were able to slow their opponent down by just playing this. Um, I wonder how many times it came up. Um, uh, I'm, I don't want to say names because I'm bad at saying names. I know Christian's an easy name, but you know the tier list gets kind of varied and wild in terms of saying names, and I just don't want to mess them up. So I'm going to try avoiding saying names. 16th place. Uh, if you can say something in the comments about how often the Siakumon came up, that'd be cool. I'm sure people would love to know how much. I like Because it's important to like talk about... Like, obviously, this is a tech, right? Obviously, we're here to, like, like obviously, it's a tech. And, like, as, like, the player base as a whole, we're always going to be curious as to how often those techs happen and how often they come up and how many games they win you over a course of whole tournaments. And, be, like, that one game it wins you is sometimes enough to get you into the top 16 and into prizing. And I feel like that's something that, like, could educate a lot of players that maybe are trying to get up to that top 16. Playing along them and... Uh, another side note with the uh, Gomamon going in, going uh, unblockable all of a sudden, especially in a world with trainings and boosts and memory setting tamers. Sometimes you you start with the Pokemon or the Gomamon and you can go all the way up to level six, especially with the memory gain that's possible in this deck. And suddenly, suddenly you're you're going from Gomamon into level six that's unblockable and you're winning the game. Uh, hybrid for the same logic. You're playing enough tamers that sometimes hybrid for game is the now the last attack you need, and then sometimes it also allows you for that clap back turn. Like they remove your whole body, you don't have rookie on back, but you can turn one of your tamers into a Digimon and go all the way up. Pretty good. I would love to know how often how good the Akakumon ends up being in the deck. Uh, I always think it's weird, but I, I always think it's clunky, not weird. Um, but I, I would love to know how often it came up for them. Any any of the effects or anything let me scroll down so you guys can see a little better 
Um, yeah, it'd just be interesting to see how it comes up. Uh, Plank, I, I didn't mention it, but we're, we're getting close to trying to max out on our memory gain inheritables from the Galgamon line itself. We're seeing a heavy Zudamon Ace in our level 5s and a preference towards the uh, unblockable, can't be redirected level 5, uh, playing the one of because it's the best one. Um, but this is kind of what we're seeing for the most part across the board, across the, across the pond, around the world. is kind of like this for our level 5s. Um, yeah, just seems a little heavy on the Zudamon Ace, but it's, I mean, it's good removal. And with the source strip that is possible in the deck too, kind of comes up. Uh, for our level sixes, we're playing four of the best one, one of the BT13 one, because bouncing a tamer, having a Vade, and being able to play a tamer in response to all that, all in one go, seems really good. Um, just, just seems good, right? Just, just good. Um, and then playing one of the BT4 Mirage Galgamon, uh, uh, when did you evolve and gain one memory for every four cards? So it essentially kind of gives it, our four cards in your opponent's hand, which kind of gives us a fifth, like, you know, this Mirage Galgamon that we can did you evolve a little cheaper, kind of turbo a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of is, it kind of acts as the fifth copy. Um, what would be interesting to see is, uh, oh man, who did it? Oh man, oh, they commented too. I, I, I oh, his name's like Brandon, isn't it? Oh man, I can't remember his YouTube channel or else I'd plug him. It's like digital, uh, is it Hyper Coliseum or is it Digital Gate Studios? Oh, I think it's Hyper Coliseum. Their icon is the Digivice, all right? I, I remember that. Their icon is the Digivice. They have a podcast that they do like every week. Just try to find them. Just, uh, just oh, please, I, I'm, this is embarrassing. I can't remember their channel name. <sighs> Only two of the Mirage Galgamon Burst Mode. Normally we see three, but we have obviously had decided to go into the Omnimon uh, Blitz as our just like, sometimes it's just one more swing. We don't need a combo, we just need one more swing. And the protection effect comes up. I feel like the protection event effect is ironically better than most things. Like people just kind of forget that this has a uh, prevent, like a, a protection effect. And it comes up one of death x because it's a relevant card and everything uh three full moon meteor impact which feels kind of high but you know i usually try to tell people to do two if you're gonna run security bombs but three is good and if it worked for you two on the memory boost it seems feels a little low to me in a deck that's just trying to find that one uh otk turn but whatever mental training for mental training because we're in a world where trainings are just kind of the best cards for uh you know setting up and playing for the future and playing and being allowing you to clap back when you just lose when you when you lose or whatever you guys get what i'm saying like it's just good um and then a little low in the tamer count only three and two feels a little low i would love to see how many games they may or may have lost because they couldn't found tamer or how maybe they're just saying that you know seeing the tamer is not important so i would love some insight on that um Typically we see like uh, ideal, my ideal count for tamers is usually in the six if they're as if they're as important as they tend to be in a deck like this, but interesting. Playing one of the banned uh, Digibubbles, uh, interesting they chose to go full four of Winemon instead of trying to do like a one of and then three just to try to like up the odds of seeing the jamming, but you know, we have other ways to get jamming, so it's not that important. Uh, anyway. Congrats on 16th, Mirage Galgamon. How about that? Next deck is uh, Shine Greymon. So we'll start off. Shine Greymon's really cool. Red, yellow. Why is there a Bubbles? Well, good viewer and good uh, Shine Greymon player who got top 14th, and you'll you'll probably comment in the comments below or tell Egg complain to Eggman that this is what the card should be, and uh, we'll fix it for the links when you tell us what it is. But the list we received only had 49 cards. Um, that's not to say that they were like cheating or something. I'm not trying to say that at all. It's just like sometimes you forget a card, you know, it slips through the cracks, you know, there's like 200 and something decks to go through as a tournament organizer. One, one deck missing one of card is nothing crazy. Um, so just let us know what this one card is. Uh, I couldn't figure, I, there was nothing obvious to me that was missing. Maybe another one of these, but even then, like, just nothing felt right to replace, so... Mm. There's a uh, there's also another list. I think it was the eighth place when we get there for the Devas. Also complained then. Um, yeah, so this Bubbles is just a mystery card because we only had 49 cards in the, the reported deck list. And we tried to dig, but just couldn't figure it out. So it's fine. 
Uh, anyway, going into uh, our suite of all four of the good Agumons, my uh, dehumidifier is beeping, so don't worry, I'm not dying. Uh, these are just the just just the good Agumons for the deck. There's not really too much to say, especially when you just sit there and max out on all of them. These are the tw you're on 12 rookies because you have so many boosts and tw you don't really need to see. You only need to see one, and then everything kind of daisy chains. That's the thing about ratios too, is like, especially when it comes to rookies, you run more rookies because you want to see them early. But once you've seen the one, realistically speaking, your draws there on forward should just daisy chain into another, into the essentially, you know, you're running four eggs, the four rookies you need for raising area. And then anything more than that, like, is like, I'm starting to on play them to try to get some searching done. You get my point. So, yeah. Good numbers, good numbers. Either way, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say anything. And then we're on nine champions, uh, cutting champions, I guess, because we're on so many boosts. And again, like as long as we can daisy, daisy chain one time, we get there. Uh, yeah. So Geo Gray, uh, one of the band one, and then maxing out on the other two good ones. We're playing the red. We want everything to be red yellow in the deck, and everything kind of has to be yellow because we're on the physical training, which is you know understandable. Playing one of the Rise Greymon from, I think this is the BT12 one. Okay, so we're, yeah. So all of them have the same inheritable, so it allows you to, if a Marcus is deleted, you get to put it to the top of your stack, uh, put it to the top of your security stack face down. And then four of the BT13 one, which allows you to play a Marcus, and then when one of your Marcus is a red tamer, uh, it, it's the same thing and they're both they're they're both the same thing and this one just lets you when you if you have a little this one lets you cheap uh did you evolve cheaply because you gain a memory back and this one actually lets you play the marcus which kind of is more valuable especially with all the otk potential in red high or in shine Greymon, just playing as many teamers as possible the one of ace magnet andromon just like a combat trick is always good aces tend to be that and then two of the X antibody. This is something I find interesting. Uh, I know I taught I, I I I've I've tracked. Uh, I think the Bradio Active is on Twitter. I know he has a I know he has a YouTube too. I think, but he's mostly on Twitch and Twitter. Twitter. Um, I'm really bad at Twitter, by the way. I I I don't know Facebook too. It's I, it's so difficult for me. I'm maybe I'm just old. I don't I don't know. Anyway. Uh, he swears off this card. He doesn't like it. Uh, Digivolving for four is a pain, and then Digivolving for one on top of that is also lame <laughs> so mm, yeah it's it's good this 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 player obviously liked it 14th place so i'm not going to argue uh two of the the shine that has gives your marcus's a plus uh plus one security check and 3k power and then nerfs your opponent's security and one of their digimon uh only two is interesting and this on top of that another thing we saw kind of pioneered by Bradio active <laughs> is the shine graymon uh from bt2 just being able to go wide and minusing 4k a bunch of different bodies for every for every uh tamer you have on board i guess is relevant i guess it's good enough and there's it comes up enough to where like you want to be running this at two and you know there's a lot of decks that go wide but do they go 4k wide I guess if we're, I guess the big thing we're afraid of is Numemon in that scenario. And then like, if we're not afraid of Numemon, we just, we just minus DP one big stack and call it a day. And then we, uh, shine Greymon two of the burst mode, two of the ruin mode. Just, that's a little heavy on just one above the curve for level sixes, but, uh, or sevens. But uh, yeah, both both these cards are good. The uh, burst mode allowing for the OTK and just like security check after security check, and then ruin mode allowing you for the board control that is just possible from a four five k blanket twice. Just locking your opponent out of their raising area is huge. Four of training because training is really good. I always find it funny when uh, Shine Gray Months just play eight trainings because with a deck lineup like this, you'll quickly notice that other than the Shine Gray Mon in the Ruin mode, you could be on, or I guess the Magnemite Angemon too, but you could be on four yellow trainings, four red trainings, and then everything in your deck is a hit, ex like except for like your like one or two tacks. Anyway, 14th place, Shine Gray Mon. Kind of sick. Did we skip 15? No, we didn't. I'm following my own rules. Sorry. Anyway, uh, 13th place, Numemon. Only one Numemon today. Let's see if... Well, we're seeing the uh, Agumon X Anybody Tech from uh, the American event. I wonder if this player was inspired by that list and realizing comboing it with the starter deck Agumon. And yeah, and then playing two cool boys. I, I wonder... I don't have lists memorized. This looks really close to that list from uh, a week ago from last week, I should say. Um, and 
like it's it's interesting to see that like you know this was the list this is the only list to make it through all the way so maybe maybe this is just the play i'm sure there's a ratio changed here and there based on preference and um should i talk about this uh net decking is okay like this like if you are a numamon player and you just go to your locals tomorrow with this exact list no one should be frowning upon you bro like you want it you want to play a good deck and you want to play the best version of your deck sometimes it's okay to just play something that won an event and then say to yourself wow this deck is cool why does it work why are the ratios cool you know seeing for yourself and experiencing for yourself why these topping lists are topping is something to make note of and when lists start looking the same that means the list is solved and that's okay um I'm not saying that this person did that i'm just that's what's going through my mind right now so i'm i'm kind of just ad-libbing everything i do um 13th place good job I, i'm not i'm never trying to take any away from anything away from anyone i'm just just it's just a thought that came to my mind uh cool boy again i said this last time you have you have hits on five you have hits on four you have hits on three um and the extra sometimes you don't need a hit with cool boy you just need to proc its effect once and it's good enough to just take it away right um one louis because we're playing ukamon and that rush of capability is just too good our package uh everyone has agreed at this point that two war amons amons where we're gonna be and we're not playing the call <laughs> I like that one. But again, once again, Black Base taking it. And I, it looks like this is the Digi Bubble lineup that we're trying to see all the Black Bases go to now. Um, one of Merciful Mode. Um, a lot of, like, we're starting to see a world where Graveyard Hate is important. Only one Proto Farm because, uh, like, it's just, we don't, we can't fit a second one, looks like. And one Quanta, one Quartz. Just, you know, a top end package that works. And, it, and, it, and it's good. I can't complain. Uh, top 13, Numemon, you're the only one to make it through in Oceana. Maybe you're the only one. I, I, we didn't get the data for the, the full 127 people yet. So I'm not sure what the, the, the field looked like yet, but yeah. Anyway, next deck, congrats on 13th. Uh, Vimon Armor. Uh, and it's funny to say, we, we are going to have to start calling it Vimon Armor or, uh, or, I guess Ma I guess Magnamon armor, and then there's armor rush, which is like all the different colors, where like flame dramon, Lydramon, Magnamon, uh, any different ones you want to fit in there. Uh, and then rap the Rapidmon armor deck is going to be even more relevant. So we got to start we we got to start wording this stuff correctly. That's clearly what. Um, anyway, <laughs> playing our favorite uh, lineup of Vmons. Interesting, we chose to go heavy on the jamming, uh, just, you know, valuing bodies on board, even if they're nowadays more removable. Uh, playing the, the promo from the movie, I believe, when this Digimon would digivolve into a card with free in its tray, if you have a tamer, reduce the digivolution cost by one. This is good. I, I don't disagree with this being at four at all. Um, being able to digivolve cheaply, as we can see with trainings and everything, is just good, and it's just where we want to be uh yeah and then just filling out our rookie rush ranks i mean we need to we're champion rush is nothing without the rookies right like you need rookie you need to see rookies so you can champion rush your opponent and so you need to kind of run more rookies and more champions in in correlation even though i, I say that but we're only on uh, 11 champions but whatever whatever um anyway yeah playing four of the original bt8 magnamon always good unsuspending is always busted playing three of the bt13 one valuing this one less because we're making room for the new one the black blue one which is just good man uh being able to strip sources being able to being able to strip sources based on the color the, co the amount of colors against your opponent is really good uh the security effect is insane and you're playing four of because you want to want to see that security effect makes sense to me uh two zudamon ace one guru on ace i go on record saying this is where guru is probably one of the worst aces in the game but i would love again leave uh this guy 12th place guy Tell me, uh, tell me how often this came up in the tournament. How many games did it win you and was relevant? I would love to know. Um, that's the kind of stuff, again, that's the kind of stuff we're super interested to, to know about as a community. And I, I think it needs to be asked. And um, I'm going to ask because that's just who I am as a person. Uh, but Zunamon is kind of a mainstay in most places. The the strip two and then remove a body sometimes is just kind of nuts. 
Um, Death X is one of Death X is always good. Ruin mode because we are playing uh, Magnemon X as our six. And again, the locking out of our opponent's turns is good. Two full moon meteor impacts for security bombs. Only one awakening of the golden knight. That's interesting. This always felt like a four of in the deck, but we're only playing one in this list. And, I mean, you did well with it. Uh, playing two heaven's judgment. Uh, again, just oh, just favoring security bombs. And we have a lot of colors in the deck. Like often, most of the time, we're probably going to be on yellow blue. But sometimes we'll be able to add black to that list to have three colors. And then who knows if we get into yet purple, bro. Oh man, if we get into purple, we're just cooking with this thing. One of X antibody proto form makes sense to me. Eh, does it? I guess I guess only one. Just so just so when we go into Magnumon X, it's even cooler and cheaper, right? Um, I think this thing digivolves for five on top of a, a Magnumon, so yeah, you, uh, it just gets us there. Um, one Davis from BT3, best green tamer in the game. Search top three for a blue and a green. We have no green, but we are going to get the green or blue and memory setting is good. Uh, and we need tamers to proc the promo beam on anyway. Yeah. Um, playing three of the new Davis, uh, from the promo Davis from the movie. Start of main phase. If you have a Digimon with free and his strength, gain one memory. These tend to be really good, especially since they're start of main phase, not start of turn. Activate one of your, uh... On play, activate one of the following effects. You may play a Vmon, which helps the rush. So now you for three, you can you can play your tamer that's gonna activate some of your effects, and then you can play a Vmon and still get that value of like adding to the board while setting up a tamer really good. Or on play, one of your Digimon may digivolve into an X Vmon in hand. That's never happening in this deck, so we're just doing the on play for the for the rookie rush, which also explains our higher Vmon count, right? Follow it all tracks. Uh, and then Louie, because we have Ukumon. And Louis is just kind of good on his own. Not bad. So we're on what? Six tamers? Not bad. Uh, the only thing is, the only like downside of only four blue tamers is that the Winemon does require a blue tamer. So, mm. and then the one of Bukamon. I, I wonder how much that matters. You're not playing, like, you're not like a big source deck, especially since you're going in with just your level fours most of the time. So it'd be interesting to see how how good, how clutch the Bukamon is. But it probably is just the case of it's the best fifth egg for the deck. And you don't want to be on Upamon for whatever reason. So yeah, it makes sense to me. Anyway, Gretz on 12 armor. Armor is a lot of fan favorites this this week on intact. Like just fan favorite decks across the board. Going to Alphamon, our ninth place. I feel like I broke my rules somewhere here, but we're gonna talk about Alphamon or Machine Dramon. We're talking about Machine Dramon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Machine Dramon, uh, ninth place, Alex Chambers. Uh, Machine Dramon, another fan favorite deck. Just got access to this Hagurumon. Uh, it's just another on play. Not playing the old Hagurumon. So here's just some interest. So the Doramon's been a mainstay for a while, but now we're playing the Hagurumon, which is kind of like an upgraded version of the one original one from EX1. But the, but the idea, but not playing both of them feels weird to me, but I mean, if it works, it works. Playing and then the, playing the Kokua, Kokuamon with the inheritable blocker, which, you know, it's just like, you'd be surprised how often like a Machine Dramon stack just doesn't have blocker. And they're always like, just like, it's actually kind of smart to just have redundancies when it comes to blocker because blocker is one of your more important inheritables and now i'm taking a a once over the inheritables this is actually the only way to get inheritable blocker in this deck um so interesting enough a lot of reboot redundancy too i'm seeing um but the biggest thing that machine Dramon got was actually from the double typhoon deck because would you believe it or not the really good rapping mon Level five is a cyborg, so it works with the entirety of the deck's game plan. Is black and digivolves on black, and just kind of, just kind of good, just just kind of good. Um, again, on play when digivolving, did you evolve one of your opponent's Digimon trash? To blah blah blah. Uh, then one, if you have a green tamer, oh, so you never get the green tamer effect, so that's really unfortunate. But whatever, it's an it's a it's essentially a second metal Tyranomon, so you can. So you can, in theory, have both of these in the in the in the stack really easily because you do have to have put uh, five unique level fives when it comes to the EX Machine Dramon. So you know, interesting. Then it's always curious to see where they val where are they prioritizing upping the the count for uh 
uh, level fives, we obviously up the count on Metal Greymon because we want to be attacking into Unsuspended Digimon. We up the count of this guy because he's insane. Inheritable when attacking to Digivolve 1 is nuts. There, there is not a lot of protection in this game against the Digivolving. So the more you can have it, the more you're just chilling. So then you have this on top of attacking Unsuspended on top of, oh my God, it's just so good. It's just so good. Uh, not playing any Marvins to go with it, but whatever. Um, yeah, on play, when did you evolve and retail the top three cards of the deck? Among them, place one cyber card in this Digimon's Digivolution sources and add one such card to the hand, trash the rest when attacking if an SOC. So the when attacking never comes up. Yeah, so the we're not playing Marvin, so this never happens, but it's interesting. And we're also playing, you know, we're playing from a removal, especially with Numemon running around. Uh, it's just good playing and then playing just like a just not playing more of the tamer deleters interesting that's the kind of meta we're in we, like it's it's interesting uh and then or we're also should i talk about this guy he's just a blocker man Re reboot he's cool came out in bt15 uh and then yeah our package of machine dramon level sixes we're playing four of the chaos dramon from ex3 good card did you evolve three is busted playing one of the the gargomon x or oh my god ace um just the threat just the threat of this card is always going to be good it's just always 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 going to be good always going to be good and and people aren't going to expect it in this deck um and, and he's also machine so it kind of triggers a lot of your inheritables funny enough uh especially like like this one like when this while this digimon has a machine and it's traced to sleep like you just suddenly have all your inheritables live busted playing two of the senior supreme connection connection is an interesting talking point because i see a lot of people going back and forth on if, even if this card is good um it's just interesting and then we're playing three of the attack of the whole my heavy mobile digimon this is a win condition for the deck this is how they get you know omni for game hybrid for game this is their version of that and sometimes it's just a good comeback uh just a good comeback for them um yeah and then defense training to try to help us you know have the line we're actually heavy like i mean are we heavy uh, just this is just like a standard level three to four lineup and then double defense training finds us our analog man so we can be defenses and then four dorymon because drawing cards is good and it works in the deck funny enough uh grats on ninth man uh machine dramons oh you're you're the king of the machine dramons for now <laughs> yeah uh next deck uh okay so the train of leviathan and i will always i will give my spiel once again i know that as uh, competitive players we are always stressing about how stressful it can be to decide our ratios one of this two of that three of that it gets very intense and our choices matter to us a lot and then to see to top an event and have those choices pay off just for a youtuber like me to belittle that choice being like yeah it looks like all the other leviathan is just like a little different i get it it's just a time thing man it's just a time thing. I, I don't want to be sitting here. We're already, we're already at 30 minutes. Oh my God. I'm a problem. I'm a problem. <sighs> anyway, uh, the interesting parts of this deck are definitely going to be like only one Guillaumon, um, only one Gobblemon. No Gobblemon X is interesting. We're playing the one of band card. We're playing the four of uh, best card to go with the band card. Playing three of the X antibody when attacking the old one is always interesting to me, but like it makes sense, especially when we want to be like digivolving this guy from trash with our level three, level fives, um, and not forcing us to digivolve into a, an X antibody is really important. Only playing five removal options. I've always tell people that it's like it's on six, and then you just kind of like surgically go up and down accordingly, but stay at six. But choosing only five and at 15th place, it's not bad. Only going down on a memory boost, but we're still playing a heavy like boost searching package with the training and the wisdom training, wisdom training and the memory boost. Um, and then the one of Beals and X anybody trash people's trash. Your trash gets pretty big with all the discarding and stuff. So sometimes you can just attack security and win X anybody did you evolve into this thing and get game on top of that. I mean, I, I, we saw Tessero like pave the way for not pave the way. Maybe, maybe that's probably like giving a too much credit but he is the first person to top i believe and have this x antibody his list at least since i've been covering decks so like if i'm wrong i'm wrong whatever i'm not trying to hate i'm just have a bad memory and i don't track as much as i should um 
yeah, everything else, ruin mode is a good, you know, board, again, good board wipe. Uh, next deck, uh, seventh place, Leviamon. What are the differences? Differences was we don't down on Goblimon. We're actually playing the Goblimon package. Still only one of the Rush Geomon. Actually playing Octomon. I don't think the last list was playing Octomon. Yep. Uh, th only only three and three of this. Still playing one of the band card. Three, three. No. Uh, Waru Seedramon. Interesting talking point there. I would, if, you know, this, I'm not a Leviamon player, so I'm not always going to know why or why not we would be playing a certain card. This War of Cedramon seems like a good card, so I'm surprised we're not on it. But, uh, so let me know why you're not on it. You chose to be more on more, uh, you chose to be more on more Cerberus Mon X antibodies, so I respect. Oh, because you, I guess to help facilitate the fact that you're on us, even a single proto farm is like, uh, helps you be on a consistent path. Playing six removal options, except one's a seventh full cluster, still kind of makes me right, just differently. Uh, playing three and three, we see this a lot. I don't think the last list, no. Uh, this is pretty standard. Three and three, Leviamon, Leviamon X, one Ruin Mode, one Beelzemon X. Again, I'm going to give credit to the, I'm going to give credit to Tessero. If someone else did it first, let me know. As far as I've been making videos on topping lists, Tessero did it first. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say. And then we had a cut of memory boost. Next deck. And this is our highest placing Leviathan X, Alexander, sixth place, um, no Gabumon package, one of the band card, four of the accompaniment card, playing the Waru Sidramon, playing the playing a, a lot closer list to the the first list we saw. Actually, maybe I'm just wrong on the removal options. Everyone seems to be moving towards five removal options, and it's particularly three and one. Not playing the Beelzebub is a talking point. Um, uh, interesting to see that they did so well without it. Um, playing three and four, again, starting to be the staple for training and then just a lot of memory boosts. Playing the Floodgate and playing, our, playing a collection of Floodgates and then playing, uh, Shine Greymon. Playing X Antibody, three of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Gratz on sixth place. That puts you in the that puts you in the running for a lot of really of the really good prizing, right? Because top not only is top sixteen the invite, top eight is Omnimon. So this list was this is an Omnimon list, serialized Omnimon list. Um, uh, sometimes it just comes down to tiebreakers. So it's like I think between some of these, it's it's a little different. But no, Gratz on the list. Gratz on Gratz on your success. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't get the the babies on here. I'm sure it's just Sunomon. Um, I guess they didn't import correctly. Sorry. Uh, let me know what babies you did if it wasn't the Sunomon. Uh, I guess I'll add them uh, later. Or again, some of our data wasn't perfect when we were collecting it. So we just went with what we had. We'll, be, we'll love to add it uh, if you tell us what it was. Anyway, next list. Fan favorite, fifth place, Alphamon. I'm sure everyone's excited, especially with all the support that this deck is getting in the future. I always kind of felt that Alphamon was good. Um, my talking points are like going to be things like, oh, Ryudamon's cool, filling out our rookie lineup. I don't like Sunrizamon, but getting the extra security check plus one to make up for the fact that the door of Greymon is at one in a banned card makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. Dor Goromon from, from BT13 just all turns, you know, one one extra K is, is good. And then we're playing... Uh, oh, and, and it drops for four, so if you're bricked is an important thing. Play, and then we're playing this one, uh, the good old one from BT7. Uh, it's a six drop, but you know, uh, oh my god, opponent's turn while you're you have this is the one that it has blocker on your opponent's turn, but it's not really like that good. That's why we're only at one. We're only it's really just a stepping stone, and then it has the same inheritable as uh, as our cheaper to play one here. Uh, the opponent's turn thing probably never comes up. And then four of the X, the, the Dex version, because it's not the X antibody version, um, funny enough. And then we got three of the not banned Doru Greymon. It's the best one we can play, BT13. End of your turn, you may place one Digimon card with X antibody in the trade. So you can just, it's, just, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. Um, it's also got the when Digi Evolving has some protection, can't be DP reduced, things like that. This is the really good one. You love it, you hate it. It's been around forever. Three of the Dex X version 
um just a way to trigger our cool boys and get extra draws extra value this this deck can just it's, a, it's the og of going from rookie and then ping-ponging memory as you digivolve all the way up with all your stuff playing three of the oriumon so we see it um two of only uh three oriumon so we see it Two of the BT-13 one because it just has such a good protection effect. And it's only once per turn and it has an on play. So, it, I mean, it's got relevancy to it. But, like, realistically, the all turns once per turn when the Digimon would leave the battle area by an effect by returning one Digimon card with X Anybody or Royal Knight from its Digivolution cards to the bottom of the deck prevent it from leaving play. Like, you just put so many sources under this thing that, like, once per turn is every turn, you know? <laughs> um... And then two of the Alphamon, uh, Digivolving is a good uh, mechanic. Like it's 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 hard. It's very rare for something to be unaffected by Digivolve, and so Digivolve just answers a lot of boards a lot of the time. Three Oriumon because we got to see it for our just OTK shenanigans. Uh, Final goes Zukamon Gone Punch for the extra security attack blocker reboot. Um, it's just an aggressive card, really. I mean, <laughs> plus three K, and then with our Inheritables. We have to see this guy. If we see if we see the level four, then our BT thirteen uh, Alpha Mon gets over, um, and our BT our BT nine Alpha Mon's not good enough for Zubagon Punch. But sometimes we're just kind of on Oru one anyway. So, uh, yeah. Mhm. Mm not bad. Uh, one Kongu because uh, it's just it's good protection, man. It stops chaos. It's it's honestly like. Like, don't mess with me. Like, it's good, good to get. Like, I ran it back in BT9 because I didn't want to get chaos degraded. I didn't want to get bounced. Slows my opponent down from attacking. Uh, one protoform, four training because trainings are the new memory boost and they're better. Only one of the UG is interesting to me. I felt like the UG would be better than Cool Boy, but Cool Boy never whiffs in this deck, which is busted. So, yeah. And then four of the Dormammu, just like Machine Dramon. Why are you copying Machine Dramon? What's up with that? Get your own digi bubble. <laughs> oh, fifth place Alpha Mon. I'm sure a lot of people are happy to see this. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the red hybrids. I believe there was three of them. Uh, seeing on, seeing a low rookie counting. This feels low to me. And we're on uh, the piercing one and not the BT4 one for more searching. So all our uh, flame mons can just get us value. Interesting to me is that the the rookie count is so low, but we are on three Ukamon. Uh, and then 12 champions, only four level fives. It's one of the weak points of the deck is that you're only on four level fives. And the fact that we're not seeing the Geth Star Red Hybrid uh, Garudamon Ace in here is interesting to me. Playing one of the Emperor Greymon with Blitz from BT7 is also like a thing that I see. Like a lot of people just cut this card, probably opting to play a second Omnimon Blitz. But sometimes this is just Omnimon Blitz, you know, like it's, it's a good card. Um, uh, it makes blocking weird and then uh, you attack again anyway heavy on the option count it feels like i always mention this but the option count is where the option count and level five situation is where this deck often sees its losses there's there's two there's three ways the deck i think red hybrid loses not seeing enough tamers and security is one seeing too many options in hand and not enough digimon is two and then only not seeing your level five is the that's the third way this deck loses and that's like why this deck struggles even though i know it won of an event uh, just to prove me wrong, it decided to win an event of all things. <laughs> but I, I think those are the three weaknesses of the of the deck. And yeah, we, we made it through all the way to 11th place, right? Hybrid, grads, got, you got your invite. Or wait, no, you don't get invites. You guys are Oceania, man. Grats anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, next red hybrid list, 10th place. Um, playing more rookies because I like to see more rookies, more maxing out on everything, having fun with the flame on situation, only playing 11 champions, but we do get the guest star Garudamon, not playing the Blitz uh, uh, Emperor Greymon, only playing one Omnimon Blitz, playing a more even kilter option count. Uh, yeah, no memory boost, no removal, but we're on 2-2-2 two, two, two versus... Uh, yeah, so we're playing two less options than what this list is running um, and then just kind of changing numbers around. I think my math's right. Uh, yeah, and then Coromon, everyone's agreed that Coromon's the best digi bubble. Um, and playing Gravity Crush and what the other person wasn't, Gravity Crush is kind of like Memory Boost, but like 
more on demand but less like full value because it doesn't work in security and it doesn't like you'll never get like it, it it's interesting it's interesting the the debate between uh red memory boost and gravity crush for sure it's an interesting talking point um not one for today though uh and then our third red hybrid um again playing a higher rookie count playing a floodgate um, especially this against Leviathan's really good. Opting to down an Ukomon so we can fit in the Gatsumon or the Piercing. I wonder how often the Piercing's coming up for these guys. It's really interesting. Playing even less champions than our previous list feels awkward. Playing one more option. Uh, yeah, but we are seeing the Gravity Crush fourth place, by the way. I didn't mention that. Uh, it just feels like uh, playing one more atomic inferno this deck r kind of lives and dies off the high roll sometimes and you know if you, sometimes sometimes you're just a flame on and you send all three of atomic infernos and flame on just did four checks nice <laughs> anyway grats on fourth place getting your serialized omnimon can't complain i mean we play eight tamers bro it's this red hybrid we play all the takuyas and then we're going going to second place now uh mega gargomon the double typhoon deck this guy showed up today thinking it was a double typhoon spring cup and you know didn't care that he was wrong <laughs> uh second place sheesh playing like let's go into the list playing our assortment of terror only one lot mod i feel like that's going to be the most contentious not contentious but the most talked about the most the biggest thing to take away from the deck is only one lot mod because I know you need to be tearing them on heavy because of how rapid mon just exists in your deck, but the the ter this Terrymon is good. Like giving your your Digimon Alliance is a valuable part of the deck. We're not playing any supplement level fours or anything of the sort, which is interesting to me. Like we see a lot of people playing the level four Gal 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 Yeah, the one that went suspended, get jamming on something and. Just becomes very interesting not seeing it here. Only playing, only playing uh, eight level fours, um, and they're all rapid mons because armor is really good. Playing four, so basically we only play the rapid mons, the good one from the starter deck, and anything, everything, and anything can digivolve into Gargomon Ace. And then we we have the top end of Quartz. We have a Merciful Mode for you know just graveyard hate. Plus it's just a good card on top of that. Um, Death Xmon, one of Death Xmon's good, playing Fire Rocket because we are on armors and, you know, doing two checks, kind of, kind of busted. Sometimes the insecurity effect of just deleting a blocker is really good too. Um, one Heaven's Judgment because we have the potential to be on like multiple colors, red, we got black, green, yellow, white, purple, chance of all those being on the board is not, is, is kind of crazy, but yeah, and we're playing and we're playing giant missile on top of that. So we're playing a good amount of removal and then two only two trainings feels weird, but we do have to fit in so many double typhoons that it makes sense. Willis, Henry, uh the X2 memory setter one. Just a just you know. Uh, what is it to again? Your turn when you attack with it, it is in his name. You may suspend this Digimon to suspend when your opponent's Digimon. Probably just there as a memory setter. I'd be interested to see if it would, it'd just be better to be on a Mimi. Uh, whatever. And then three of Willis. Willis just extends so much. And it's kind of like a Mimi too, which is just good. Uh, the on play effect, I mean. Um, it's an interesting deck. I, I find I, I I believe it has trouble with taking games and winning, but they got second place, so I'm just kind of wrong there. Um, but I, I, from what I understand, like the deck is supposed to try to win on its level fours and then just threaten Gargomon Ace constantly. But level fours tend to be really easy to deal with, even if like you know you're threatening Gargomon. And then the rap that's where the rapid one comes in, right? You need to see a green tamer, and then this guy can't be removed, and then it's a guaranteed Mega Gargomon Ace. Um, it can get DP reduced though, but mm. playing four of the Gummymon from the starter deck when attacking, it's it's a Winamon. When attacking once per turn, if you have a green tamer, draw a card. So it's the green version of Winamon, which Winamon's the best blue egg, so it makes sense. Uh, and then one Niaromon with all the uh you no know, Digi bubble rookie cheating this deck can do. It makes sense to be on five eggs. While this Digimon is suspended, gain 1k. Simple, clean, easy. Now let's go into our number one deck. This deck did 
way better than I thought it would in Oceania or anywhere. It's Devas. We're going to see, we're going to go into eighth place. So all three of our Deva decks got into uh, serialized Omnimons. So congrats on that. Uh, three Antillamon, two, two horse, two snake, one goat, one dragon, one tiger, one ox, one boar, one rat, one, two chickens, three lions, one monkey, and then three of three of Suzaku, four of Ciseru, two of Genbu, one of Biako, four of our God King Stratadragoon, two Crimson Blaze. I think this eighth place deck is the one where we only had access to 48, 42 cards and it was missing eight cards. But I think it was just, I think we deduced that it was just missing uh, four and four of these white options, which makes sense. Um, and then playing an interesting tamer lineup, we play the white tamers in the deck so we don't have to have a Deva on board to activate these. Um, it makes our lives so much easier to just have these white tamers on board for sure. And then one hero on Manokawa. I, I mean, we're on level fives. So, you know, a memory setter plus, you know, when attacking an extra 2k just to keep our bodies a little bit safer because we'd be swinging. We'll start swinging at 9k, which gets over every level five. So like our chances go way up. Our percent of not dying in security goes way up. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean this this it's not a lot it, it's 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 Davis. Three Antillamon seems high. Three rabbit seems high, but I don't know. I don't know too, I don't know enough about the deck and its ratios. I know that most people see that Bahu ba, Bahu or Bahumon is the worst one, so they try to just have it at one, but you kinda wanna have the names anyway, so it works. Um next deck. Oh, we're playing a purple base. Ooh, we're playing Ukomons. Oh, okay. Wait, did the other guy even play Tiger? Oh, oh, we played this tiger. Hmm. We played the we played the EX5 tiger. And this guy's playing the BT13 tiger. Oh. Inch oh, and we're playing the BT6 dragon. So we're playing we're we're playing Deva without fully playing all the new stuff. So rookie package is interesting. Ukumon is just a good card. I mean it'll just forever be a good card. And it's white. <laughs> I th actually now that I think about it, it's white so it, it triggers these guys analog youth is the, still the best and then just going full hard or, okay so let's go through the, the champions one tiger one old bt13 tiger one old bt6 dragon two antillamon from ex4 um I think everyone's just kind of on this antillamon instead of the in archetype or in set uh antillamon but it makes sense alliance is a really good it's a really good ability and it just gives you a extra power while you're at level five. Um, one horse, two snake, one goat, one ox, one boar, one rat, two chicken, two lion, one monkey, uh, one dronzer, four dragoon, two Drasil, one drigger, two gar mega gargumon, which is like the interesting point here. We're on you know, we're on a healthy amount of black and black and green level fives. Like there's, so, that actually is probably another reason why we're on this, this tiger, just to have the name and an extra green. So like this Mirage Galgamon is the, or this mega Galgamon it, or Gargom. Oh my God. Mega Gargamon, Saint Gargamon, whatever. Um, oh, that's actually, that's actually like this Gargamon just makes this this tiger better and this Intilamon that much better because that, that just allows us to be more black green while still getting to keep all our names that's that's that's, that's sick that's smart and i wonder how much this inheritable came up the inheritable is obviously good um and then this one let's just go through it. suspend one of your opponents digimon 7k or less then until the end of your opponent's turn one of your opponent can't doesn't unsuspend probably doesn't come up for the on play too much but your turn, inheritable. Your turn. Once per turn, this Digimon would Digivolve, reduce its evolution cups by one. Uh, if you're ever trying to Digivolve and not Ace, I guess that's a thing. Uh, again, it's probably more for the color. I feel like the, the biggest thing is the color. Um, then one Merciful Mode, one Death X, four of the God King, Strata Dragoon, uh, four, 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 four. Just our white package. We see it all the time. Uh, not bad. The, 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 the rookie thing is interesting to me. I wonder, I wonder, I would love, 
I would love some words about it, right? Uh, comment, comment in the comments if you like me enough. <laughs> Third place, grats, bro. Uh, and then our first place sovereigns, also on the green tiger. Let's go through it. No bottom end, literally no bottom end. Uh, let me make sure the number. Let me make sure I even uploaded this right. Uh, this carry carry the one three plus seven is ten, so we're at fifty. Perfect. <laughs> uh choosing not to go for analog youth and trying to fit into more genai dropping one of the deva the the dragon summoning spell i like to call it holy peace great cardinal positionings positions uh yeah i mean you only really need to see this card once so i guess that makes sense you know why not anyway let's go through it one tiger four rabbit two horse two snake one goat one dragon one ox one boar one rat four chicken four or four lion or a tiger have i been saying lion it's tiger oops <laughs> two monkey two uh what meme do i do we uh do we do yu yu Hakusho again Oh, Final Fantasy Suzaku, Final Fantasy Saradu, Final Fantasy Genbu, and Final Fantasy uh, Biako. Uh, three. This guy really values the the first place. By the way, so when I say this, I mean I'm just saying that, like, hey, maybe, 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 maybe the current the current ideology on Davis is wrong because this guy's on three of the of the trigger. Um, which is definitely a notable difference from most other people. Um, that is interesting. Um, I would love to know the logic on that. Most people swore off it. I guess to be fair, um, you know, uh, what is this? Once per turn, when your security is checked, if that Digimon is a card with the David trait in play without, play it without battling and without paying the cost on deletion. And so like you just get stuff, you get to fill the board out more and rush just that much more and since we're not playing like any kind of rookie bottom end we're playing more we're playing we're on more davis right we're just on more davis stuff um it feels like so i i think that's where the logic becomes is like i i want to rush you down for my level fives and uh biako here gets me that extra body for game uh, oh my god, we're on an hour. Anyway, oh my god, we're on an hour. I'm so sorry. I talk way too much. This was an interesting top 16. Like, share, subscribe. Grats on first place. Davis wouldn't have said it. Four Sovereigns. I would not have believed it if I didn't see it. I mean, I knew it was a good deck. I was, I wouldn't, it's not a deck I thought, we, I thought it could top. It was a, to a deck that can top, but not a deck that could win. And you proved me wrong. You proved a lot of people wrong. Congrats. Um, like, share, subscribe. Remember to, uh, Remember to uh, like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time. Remember to, if you use this information, if you use the website, link us, give us some credit. Uh, I try to give us people credit too. So uh, like, share, subscribe guys. See you next time.